Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. For this reason, put to death your members which are on earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And it is because of these things the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you also once walked when you lived in them. Who are the sons of disobedience? Is it Gentiles who never accepted Christ? Is it the Jews who didn't accept Christ? Who are the sons of disobedience? I know that God says that obedience is better than sacrifice. <clears throat> so verse 5 says, For this reason, put to death your members, where the members is your hands, your eyes, your feet. In other words, crucify this flesh. Put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Remember, God said, you will have no other gods before me. And then he says, it is because of these things, in other words, because of these sins, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you also once walked, in other words, you walked in all of these things, fornication, evil desire, and so forth, when you lived in them. But now, now remember, he's speaking to the church at, uh, the church of the Colossians in Colossae. He says, but now you must also put off all of these sins. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have now put off the old man with his deeds. In other words, the old man of sin. And you have now put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of Jesus who created him. Jesus is the image that we should strive for. Where there is neither a Greek nor Jew neither circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all in and all. In other words, in Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter whether you were circumcised or not. It doesn't matter how sinful you were. It doesn't matter if you're a Greek or a Jew. Doesn't matter because all of that is fleshly stuff. We are now to be renewed in the knowledge 
according to the image of Jesus Christ. Verse 12. For this reason, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, which means we are holy and greatly loved, we must now put on tender mercies. I dare say, do we walk in tender mercies? Exhibiting kindness, humbleness of mind. I mean, how many people Times do we think that we're better than everybody else? Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. We should be bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ Jesus forgave you, so now you also must. Forgive them. But above all these things, above all these things, we must put on love. And love is the bond of perfection. And we must let the peace of God rule in our hearts, to which also we were called in one body and be thankful. We were called into the love of God. We were called into the peace of God. We must let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. That's how we're to live. And whatever we do in word or deed, we must do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I want you to think of this right now. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Can you go to a bar and drink a few beers and do it in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him for the two beers you just drank. Can you smoke one or two packs of cigarettes a day and do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thank God that you're able to do that through him? Are you able to cheat on your boyfriend, girlfriend, or cheat on your wife or your husband and do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him? Are we able to lie and steal and cheat and bear false witness and do evil things and speak evil of others and do it in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to our God the Father through Him? Friend, I know there's a saying that says, what would Jesus do? But this is God's Word. This is more powerful than that. He said that we should live our lives speaking to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he said, and whatever you're doing, whether it's something you do in word or an actual deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to our God the Father through him. That one verse right there will keep us on the straight and narrow path. Wives, submit to your own husbands, which is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord Jesus. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they will become discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters 
which are according to the flesh. And don't do it with eye service, being a men pleaser, but obey them in sincerity of your heart, fearing God. And here we go again. And whatever you do, do it heartily.